Today, I'm gonna show you how to make your images look great on the web. Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find me on flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And today's episode is gonna help you out tremendously if you've ever had issues uploading your images to the web. I know when I was first getting my start, I would edit images in Photoshop and I'd get them to the place where they look great on my computer and then I would go upload them to a website and the colors would be totally wrong and they were like not sharpened and looked totally icky. So today we're gonna to show you how to get rid of all of those errors. <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that. We're gonna show you how to save your images for the web. To start off today's episode, we're gonna do some color work on today's image to make it really pop on the web. Then we're gonna duplicate this document, resize and sharpen it. It's gonna make it look perfect in the desired output size you're putting on the internet. And to finish it off, I'm gonna show you how to use the save for web and devices dialog and make sure you're using all the right settings to get this on the internet. Cool, all right guys, let's jump into Photoshop. So here's our image from today. We've got a surfer, this image is so cool and I have absolutely no idea how this was captured. So we're gonna do some color work to it because we can make it even cooler. All right, we're gonna start off, I'm gonna grab an adjustment layer here and we're gonna go down to where it says color balance. All right, so our color balance adjustment layer, let's just make this a little bit smaller. We're gonna start off playing with some color here in the waves. So I'm gonna grab our slider here on the bottom and pull it really far towards blue. All right, that looks cool. Now, let's just zoom out a little bit. Here on my layer mask, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hit Controller Command I to invert that layer mask, making it black. Then we're gonna choose a brush, just a very soft edge brush here. You can just see like a very large brush. My diameter is like 2,800 pixels and my hardness is at zero. And then what we're gonna do is just kind of like paint white here on my layer mask right over here and it's gonna fill this area in with our color balance. There we go. Let's just choose a regular normal brush. All right, so painting this in is just kind of like allowing the color that we used for the color balance layer to kind of like pull into the wave and we'll do it right up here as well. All right, so we're gonna see, we got a lot of nice deep color there. Now I want a little bit of like teal color to come in this way. So we're gonna grab another adjustment layer. We're going to go to our color balance. There we go. And we're going to pull this towards green a little bit and over towards cyan. All right, that's looking really cool. Now, again, you're going to see this like it's visible on our subject. It's visible on the building. We don't want that. So we're going to click on our layer mask and hit command I on that. And then I'm going to paint white in this area. So we're going to just really get a lot of like beautiful, nice aqua color here in our waves. There we go. Let's make sure not to include that on our subject. All right. This is so cool. So just enhancing some of the colors that were already there in the image. All right, we're gonna make this area a little bit warmer. So let's grab another color balance adjustment layer. Here we go, color balance. And we're gonna move this a little bit towards red and pull it towards yellow. There we go. That's gonna look cool right over there. So let's go ahead and hit controller command I on that to invert the color mask there. And there we go, just paint it white. And you know what, I'm gonna paint a little bit over our subject to kind of warm him up as well. It'll look good from that. Kind of give this like a nice, like warm glowy look there. Cool. All right, we got one more little thing. I'm just gonna brighten our subject up. So now we're gonna grab a curves adjustment layer. We're gonna go from our darks here and I'm just gonna pull this up ever so slightly. All right, I don't really need to affect the lights here, so let's just click on, let's just have the darks pulled up, and our lights, we're gonna pull these back down a little bit. There we go. And on this layer mask, again, hit Command or Control I to invert it, and then we're just gonna paint white just where we wanna kinda like brighten up, bring some more attention. You can see the shadows were a little bit dark on our subject before. All right, cool. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the before and after. I'm gonna group all those. Just shift flick all of them and hit command G to group those and we'll take a look at the before and after. Here's our before and the after. Cool, and you guys can see that was just a couple color balance layers and a curves adjustment layer. Really what we're doing is taking the existing color and enhancing it. All right guys, now it's time to save this out for the web. 
All right, guys, so let's pretend we're gonna put this image on our personal website, maybe in our portfolio. We're gonna say we want it to be about 1200 pixels wide. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at this image as it, as it is now. I'm gonna go to image and then down here to image size. Now you can see it's 4200 pixels wide. Now, the issue here is that if I apply sharpening at 4200 pixels, and then I go ahead and save it out a little bit smaller, the sharpening effect is gonna to be totally different between a large image and a small image. So I wanna make sure I do my sizing first before I do any final sharpening. So I don't wanna change my size here either because this is like my, my actual like nice document, right? We don't wanna like, you don't wanna edit an image like big, nice, beautiful, and then resize it small. What we wanna do is instead duplicate the entire image. So really easy to do. We're gonna create a new layer here. There we go, a new layer on top of everything else. Then we're gonna to go to image and down here to apply image. There we go. And it just takes a merge. You wanna click on, make sure it says merge right here. These are going to be your uh, uh, base settings. This, it should all say like this, merge, RGB, multiply, and opacity 100%. And then this is the source is th this actual image. Okay, cool. So a merged layer basically means it just takes everything and puts it on one layer. So you have one layer that looks like a combination of everything. Okay. Now it's time to duplicate this. So we're gonna right click here, and I'm gonna go up here to where it says duplicate layer. And we're gonna choose a new document, okay? I don't need to duplicate it here, we're just gonna choose a new document and hit okay. So now we've got another document. Okay, so here's our original. Again, you wanna save that out as a PSD or a TIFF. This is the new document. We're gonna continue working from here. We're gonna resize it and sharpen it. All right guys, let's start off with the resize. So we're gonna go to image and then down here to image size. Okay, and then I'm gonna type in the size that I actually want it to go out on the internet. You want it to be your display size. So if your website calls for 1200 pixels wide, make it 1200 pixels wide. We're gonna do that here, 1200 and we're gonna hit okay. All right, now let's zoom back in and now it's time to sharpen this image up and we're gonna be sharpening it at 1200 pixels because that's, that's the final size it's gonna be visible at. So we're gonna go to filter, down here to sharpen, and over to unsharp mask. All right, and this is done right before you export it, guys. Don't do this as the first stage. You wanna do this at the very end. All right, so here we're gonna choose our threshold. I usually leave right down to zero. Just make sure, it's, it makes sure that everything's get sharpened. As you bring your sharpening up, you'll see it's definitely affecting the sharp pixels. Here's like a little bit lower. You can see it's not so sharp and higher we have our sharpened image. You just wanna make sure to keep your radius, you wanna like don't go too high with your radius or you'll start to get really weird effects like this. So bring your radius right down to the point where you basically wanna start at like zero and just use the up arrow on your keyboard and keep going until it starts to look bad. <laughs> and then when it starts to look bad, just back it off a little bit. All right, so we're gonna be about, eh, about 2.2 here. So you can use your up and down arrows for that. And then you wanna, again, go here as far as you can. Obviously that doesn't look too good. You wanna go as far as you can, go to what looks, starts to look bad, and then back it off a little bit. All right, cool. That's really nice, so let's hit okay. Now, let's just show you this before and after real quick with, these, with this image sharpened. So here's the before and the after sharpening. And again, you wanna do this at the size you're actually going to export as. That makes sure it's going to display correctly on the web. All right guys, so we did some color work, we duplicate our document, we resized it and sharpened it, and now it's time to go ahead and save it out. So to do this, I'm gonna go to File, we're gonna go down to Export, and we're gonna go to Save for Web. Now if you're using a previous version of Photoshop, it's gonna say Save for Web and Devices right under here is Save As. But we're gonna go to Export and Save for Web. There we go. So here we can see a little preview of our document. Our size is 1200 pixels, which is exactly what we want. And here's the biggie here, where it says convert to sRGB. Now, the reason is that internet browsers actually use the color profile sRGB to read images. And if you upload an image that has like Adobe RGB 1998 or Profoto RGB or any other color space, if you upload those to the web, it's still gonna use sRGB to read them. So that's where you get a lot of your issues when it comes to color. So I'm using the Save for Web and Devices dialog to make sure that I am converting to sRGB before we get on the internet. And just to make sure, we're gonna click on this little preview button there. 
So that looks good. We've got a JPEG. Quality is about 90, which is perfect, just where we need it. It is converting to sRGB, my size. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on this preview button, which is gonna open up my image. There we go, in an image browser, which is perfect. You can see the color is exactly where we want it to be. So let's go ahead and close that down, go back into Photoshop, and then we wanna hit save. All right, call this surf underscore 1200, hit enter and you're good to go. And now your image is ready to be viewed perfectly on the web. And that's all you have to do to make your images look great on the web. First, we started out with some color work, adjusting the blues and the greens to really bring a lot more depth into the image. Next, we wanna resize the image, but I don't recommend resizing your original PSD or TIFF. Instead, create a new layer, go to image and down to apply image. It's basically gonna make a copy of your whole image on that new layer. Then we can right click on that layer and go to duplicate layer. We're gonna to duplicate to a new document and then we're gonna resize the new document. This keeps you from running into any issues. Let's say you did resize your image really small and then saved it out by accident. Well, guess what? Now you don't have your large image anymore. So I always recommend creating a duplicate before you resize an image smaller. Next, we're gonna sharpen our image up. Go to filter, down to sharpen and over to unsharp mask. My recommendation here is to get your sliders to the point where they start to look bad and then back them off a little bit. That's where you find the sweet spot. Next, it's time to save for web. Go to file, down to export, and then over to save for web. Make sure to check on the box that says sRGB. Make sure your color settings are correct. Hit that preview button if you want, hit save, and you're good to go. All right, guys, that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and learning some Photoshop. And if you love Photoshop like I do, probably wanna click on your screen right about now because we're gonna put a big subscribe button on there and what that means is we'll send you free Photoshop and photography episodes every single week. And if you have an idea for an episode or a question about today's episode or just a, hey, I wanna know why the sky is blue, leave it in a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. I, I don't know why the sky is blue. Something to do with the ocean. Anyway, thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll flirt you later. Bye, everyone. So I'm using the save for web divide divide <laughs> Does that make sense? We're gonna send you them every single week. Photoshop and photography. La 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 li li li.